This two-part painting class taught by instructor Linda J. Nelson is being brought to you by Jessamine County Public Library. First, let me tell you a little bit about your instructor. Linda Nelson grew up in Chicago and Phoenix. She's also had the opportunity to travel to many other countries. Her travels and experiences diversified her interests, nurtured her love of learning, and eventually led her as a grandmother and self-identified late bloomer to painting. According to Linda, painting had always been something of a mystery to her. One day, she decided to quit wondering and dreaming about painting and start doing it. She mustered her courage, jumped in with both feet. With the help of many wonderful mentors and much experimentation, Linda developed her painting skills and love of realistic and abstract styles. Years ago, Kentucky, with its remarkable history, rolling green hills, horse farms, wonderful cities, captured Linda's heart and imagination. Now she says that there could be no better place to be inspired to paint than Kentucky. It's hard for her to pick a favorite Kentucky thing to paint. From horses to animals at the Louisville Zoo, from Shaker Village to rolling open fields, she enjoys painting everything in the bluegrass state. And there are so many exciting prospects left to paint. She feels there will always be fuel for her imagination here. The finished project will look something like this. Hi, I'm Linda Nelson, and today we're going to do an acrylic painting. And this is an example of it. We may change some things along the way, but uh, let's get started. The first thing we'll do is sketch out some things on the canvas, and that will be the mountains. And I have a piece of uh, charcoal that I'll draw with, but you could just use a pencil, just do it lightly. It's going to go be covered up with dark paint, so it won't matter. So I'm going to start about two inches down well, maybe three inches down, and I'm going to sketch in a mountain. And then I, I have another mountain coming out behind it. So you can draw that as well. The next thing I'll do is start painting in the sky. I'm going to use white. Some ultramarine blue. And I think that's all I'll do for right now. If it gets to look too um, of one color, then I, I'll change it and add in another blue. A couple things about acrylic painting that will help you know is that you use water. You don't use oil, linseed oil, you use water to um, lubricate your brush. Dip it in the water. I uh, wipe it off and sometimes I even wipe it on a cloth. It's You can get too much water or you can get too little water, and that's something you'll just learn with experience. So I think I'm okay right now. It feels like it might be a little dry, but I'm going to go ahead and try it. I'd rather have it be dry than too wet. So I'm going to dip one corner, and this is my 32 inch flat top brush. I'm gonna dip one corner in white and one corner in blue, and then I'm just going to apply it. I'm going to turn this around so I don't, it's easier to stay out of the mountains. And I don't need to go all the way down to the bottom of the picture because that will all be covered up. Let's 
takes a while. And I see that I'm getting a lot of the same blue. So I'm going to add another blue to give it a little more interest. And the, I'm using permanent blue light, which is kind of a little bit turquoise, but that's okay. The sky can be full of different colors. So let's try some of that. I feel like I need a little water, so I'm going to dip the corner of my brush in the water, dab it a little bit, but it's moving pretty dry, so I think I needed a little water to keep it moving. I don't really care if I run into the mountain because the mountain will be covered up with a blue. You have to go back and forth with the water to decide if your painting is moving smoothly or not. Just go all over it so you don't get too much, much of the same stroke in one spot. And then I kind of go over the edge. Now it does look like it's getting kind of linear, so I'm going to just take some white and use the corner of my brush and break up some of that. I did like some of that light blue, so I'm going to add a little more in, of that in. Maybe at the top. It's getting very wet, so I'm going to wipe it off and then Put a little white up there. Now I'm taking my brush and kind of paint, pushing the paint in. At this point, I think I'm going to leave the sky. If you want to put some clouds in there, just go in, take your, I probably would take a smaller brush to get it more concentrated and put some clouds in. Dab it in, then push. Change your direction of your brush, otherwise you'll have all of your strokes going the same way. Now I'm going to do, uh, start working on the mountains, and the mountains are blue. And 
one reason they're blue is that they're in the background. There's atmosphere going on in between. So although this blue is played up a little bit, they would be a, kind of a hazy look. So sometimes if you look at landscapes, the, the distance is a little more blue. So we'll go with the blue. All right, we're going to start the mountains and I'm going to go, I'm going to do a similar technique. I'm going to put, I watered my brush, dabbed it off, and then I'm putting some Prussian blue on one corner and some cobalt blue on the other. And the reason I wanted to do that is the mountain will have some depth to it in spots. So it'll look like a mountain. So I'm just going to put, dab this on. A little watery when it's too watery it's going to start blending too much together and it could be the paint too the cobalt blue is real loose Kind of try to turn your brush around so everything isn't going the same direction. And then if you get the long uh, lines or streaks, you want to make sure you get those out of there too. One thing I would recommend is before you paint to put a real thin coat of maybe burnt, burnt sienna on it all over and let it dry real good. Uh, it will cover up some of that white because as you're painting it, it is a little hard to cover the white as you can see that. I always put a ground on first, but I didn't here. I'm going to lightly stroke it too so I can help cover some of that white and get a variety of colors in there. Maybe I'll try some ultramarine blue. It won't have, matter to have three blues in there. I don't have to go all the way down to the bottom because the trees are going to cover up most of this mount the mountains. So I have a lot of the mountain done and you can see it has dark spots so it makes it look like it's a mountain. It's got uh, some crevices in it and uh, some rocks that maybe stick out. So I'm going to do the second mountain right here. And the, the way I'm going to be able to tell where they end and start is I'm going to take my darkest blue and kind of load it in there. Now that was brush was a little too big so I'm going to go for my 12, dip it in the water, wipe it off, and then I'll just kind of uh, fill in up against this mountain so I 
can see that there's a second mountain here. Turn it back up. I'm going to rinse that off and get my um, two blues in again. I am kind of moving my paint around because I'm trying to cover up some of that white. And it looks like more than one blue when you, because there is more than one blue, it doesn't look all the same color. So what I'm going to do right now is give some definition to this mountain. And I wanted to do this while the paint is wet. I'm going to add a little white in there. So it looks like the sun or the light is hitting this mountain. And I'm, I'm considering my light is coming from this direction. So I'm, I'm just going to add, pull it down in, blend it in a little bit. I think I'll do it a little bit up here. Not a lot, but at least it looks like, like it's a top of a mountain. So I've done a little touch up on it. I've been looking at it and I added some sky in here and I used a little more water. I, I feel like it was a little bit dry. I didn't mention that I am using a palette. You can get these in a tablet. They're shiny on one side and you can uh, put your paint on it, mix your paint on it. They're very good to use. But you can also use paper plates or wax paper, so you don't have to have this to do uh, to paint in acrylics. So the next place we'll go is the grass on the bottom of the painting. And I think I'm going to paint up about three inches. I am using hooker green, sap green. And I've got some uh, cadmium yellow that will really help lighten this, the uh, ground, but we may not do all of that lightening until later, but we can get it started. So I think what I'll do is kind of measure off three inches so I, I kind of know where I'm going. Yeah, I can see that the hooker green and the um, sap green are kind of looking alike here. So I'm going to add some of this yellow in and it, it'll go in nice. And I think it would be helpful to use a bigger brush.
Turn your brush around. Otherwise, you get those big streaks in it. I think I'm going to go across just so I know where I'm going and I don't go too far. Using quite a bit of paint. Acrylic does dry fairly fast. Sometimes if it's a little bit dry and you go in and try to repaint, you'll pull out paint. So you have to be kind of careful. And I did it right up here. You can see that. I'm having a hard time covering that, so I have to let it dry good now. A lot of this is going to be covered up, so I'm not too concerned what it looks like right now. I just want to get it filled in. Kind of try to do over the edge to, if you frame it, that white might show. I might like to go over that with a smaller brush too to get a variety of texture in there so it looks a little more grassy. But at this point, I think I'll just leave it. I want to point out too that on the screen, I was putting in some yellow now and then too. And you can put as much as you want in it. If it doesn't look good, cover it up with green. This will blend in really well, but it, it makes the green look lighter in spots. So you can use yellow for this. We'll come back and use yellow again later. So now I'm going to put these trees, these tall, they're tall skinny pine trees. Um, I don't know if I see a lot of these in Kentucky. They are, we see a lot of them. We've been to Alaska a few times and I always am fascinated with them. They look so beautiful in the landscape. So these are tall, skinny pine trees. And I put little dots up here where I want them to go. And you don't want them all to go straight up. So I'll probably try to angle one or two. I've got black now, and I'm using this very cheap chisel edge brush and you don't have to get hyper focused on the trunks or the tree trunks you can see that was really not too much a part of the painting and if you want to you can later but they're in the distance and on this painting i actually did cover them up with greenery a little bit in the end so uh, we're doing the green trees first and these yellow uh, fall looking trees later. So I'm going to uh, come down, just tap. This is just giving you a reference of where to build the tree. And these don't need to come all the way down because they're going to be covered up with the yellow trees. This one I'm putting a little bit at an angle. I 
get a little more black paint. They don't have to be real straight. They're just giving you a reference, point of reference. All right, now we'll start building the pine trees. And I think I'm going to use, this is um, an eight or a six. It's worn off, I can't really read it. I think it's a six. I'm going to start out small because if I make my tree branches too big, it's harder to pull them in. So if I go small and I don't like that, then I can make them bigger. So I'm just going to put a uh, sap green on the corner of my brush and I'm just going to tap a little bit, leaving lots of holes, lots of loose branches. I did not wet this brush down at all, and I think it would help if I did. So I'm going to add a little water. You don't want it to look dotty, all like dots, so you can go back and push those together, but it's better to go little and then bigger. And this brush is maybe a little too small, but I knew that if I start out with a big brush, I can get myself into trouble with too much branches to begin with. I just keep shaping it. It's Part two of this class will air on Saturday, June 13th at 10 a.m. on the Jessamine County Public Library YouTube page. In the meantime, Linda and Ron Nelson would like you to visit their online store at creekside-ky.art. You can also view some of Linda's work in the JCPL Gallery. It will be on display through July 31st, 2020.